The first presidential contest right around the corner now, and the Republican candidates are ramping up attacks on each other. So now it's just like one long debate night. Check out these new ads from pro-Trump and pro-Haley PACs. I will not, not now, not ever, support raising the gas tax. Really? Not now? Not ever? Huh. Just 24 months later, high tax Haley flipped. Of all the Republicans running for president, why is Donald Trump only attacking Nikki Haley? Because Trump knows Haley's the only one who can beat him. And Nikki Haley has made some gains in New Hampshire. The Real Clear Politics average of polls shows she jumped by more than 15 points since September, and her team is not only focused on the former president. In a world of chaos, the last thing America needs is another dumpster fire. The support for Ron DeSantis plummeting. Republican voters are just not that into DeSantis. The first Republican showdown, 26 days away from now, New Hampshire, eight days after that. John O'Caldwell, Fox News political analyst, Richard Fowler, Fox News contributor. Gentlemen, great to see you both. Um, John, I'm going to start with you and where the Republican race is now. And, and are, you, are you kind of hearing from voters that they understand it at this point to be a race for second place to Donald Trump? I think you just hit it right on the head, Harris. This is a race for second place, uh, potentially a race for vice president. I think Nikki Haley would make an exceptional vice president uh, if she were to choose to join Donald Trump. But in my opinion, this race is completely over. The primary is too far away for any of the candidates, Nikki Haley, Ron DeSantis, uh, Vivek uh, Ramaswamy, any of these guys that catch up to Donald Trump. And the more we keep seeing things like Colorado, these court cases only provides a greater, uh, a greater support system for Donald Trump because Republican voters see it as an attack on them. In fact, Richard, uh, my earlier guest, Leo Terrell, said something interesting. He wants to see a profile and courage now from Biden, <laughs> excuse me, and Kamala Harris, president and vice president, respectively, obviously. Uh, on this whole thing that's playing out with Donald Trump and, and keeping him off the ballot in Colorado, what do you make of it? Well, on the Colorado bad issue, I think it's unprecedented. So we have to see. I think we're going to have to see what happens here. I do think that you will likely hear something from the White House later today, based on my sources there. Uh, and I also think you're going to hear something from the Supreme Court, which could be the ultimate determiner on that. <laughs> Where I agree with Giano is on this idea that this court case does provide some fodder for Trump as we get closer to this midterm election, almost tightens his base a little bit more. But with that being said, I'm not sure that this primary is quite over yet until voters mm -hmm. actually have their say. I think what the, the, the rise of Nikki Haley in the polls, and I think after Iowa, the fact that you'll likely see Chris Christie, maybe Ron DeSantis, maybe Vivek Ramaswamy drop out the race, this could become a two-person race. And with, mm -hmm. if you add those numbers up, there is a, not a big window, a very small window, maybe a crack in that very small window for <laughs> Nikki Haley to make, so, to make a play to be the potential nominee for the GOP. It's so interesting to hear Democrats say that, um, because I, I would think you wouldn't want to face her anyway, because she actually leads all of the Republicans, including Donald Trump, in a percentage above Joe Biden. Let's move to this, if the race were held today, the presidential election. Uh, low approval ratings, voters down on Joe Biden on the top issues, but another number is raising some frustrations among the president's team. The number is 81. Yes, he's an octogenarian. A new report says Biden is reluctant to accept his old age. Aides say an excerpt here. President Biden's reluctance to acknowledge his physical limitations is causing some tension on his team as senior aides and First Lady Jill Biden push him to rest more and be vigilant about his health going into 2024. The author of the piece said this. Biden, behind closed doors, repeatedly says, you know, I feel so much younger than my age. And he says it so often and with such real sincerity that there has become this tension where he ends up overextending himself, that basically aides feel that he does not know his own physical limitations and that he tries to do too much. And, you know, that has this you know, adverse effect where he ends up wearing himself out. So even though he is doing more events, he actually presents as more tired. So Alex Thompson also reports that the first lady has taken on a very active role in trying to get the president to pull back. Uh, and we'll stop right there. I want to go right back to my guests. Richard, what do you make of all of this? 
Look, I'm not going to engage in the palace intrigue here, right? Uh, listen, I think what we do know, we've been talking about this for... Wait a minute. Palace intrigue. <laughs> the palace you, you intrigue. You don't believe no, no, the let people me be very, closest let, to let him. Let me be very clear. When I say palace intrigue, I'm talking about what the first lady's office is doing and what the... That's what not this palace office. intrigue. No, she's but not I think, supposed and, to be running listen, the country, whether, so she's trying to run it, him. Harris, and I've said this whether it was Donald Trump in the White House or Joe Biden in the White House, when you hear unnamed aides making comments to reporters, for me, I find that to be problematic. If you're going to say it, put oh, wow. your name so on you it. So you want to impugn, impugn all but journalism. You don't think we can no, have no, our sources I'm, listen, as and a that journalist, those sources aren't good? I, and by the a, way, as, when you get a, north as, of three sources, now remember, a, no, how course, many staff I, I members have been with, talking all along? I agree that's with a lot to say that you don't and, believe they're reporting. I agree with triple sourcing, and I won't deny the president's okay. age. I'm saying I won't come out in the policy well, intrigue. Now, with that being said, with that being said, what I will say is this time last year, I want to say we did a segment on this date last year. The, we were talking about the ideal of the potential right. of a possible recession. As we move into this Christmas holiday, we're not having that conversation. So while his age is indeed a <laughs> Richard problem, Fowler, the president I have never does have an opportunity to talk like about. You, play it. The you president just went to 2022 <laughs> and a conversation sure, about a possible because recession this to is... avoid talking about the inevitable. No, no, with no, Joe no, no, Biden. no, 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 no. I'm going to go to the I, other I'm guests now. I'm not talking about the. I, I'll acknowledge his age. I've said it. Jono. He's old. Nobody's, not, nobody's denying that. Actually, you know what, John? I'm going to come to you first after this. I, I was watching. Late night host Jimmy Fallon was mocking Joe Biden's age last night with a fake Christmas card from the president. Watch this. The front of the card says, do you hear what I hear? Open up and says, do you? Because I'm hearing something like a buzz from an air conditioner. Is it <laughs> feedback from my hearing aid? Let's just go old school. Jill, where's my ear horn? <laughs> eh? Eh? It's not palace intrigue, Jono. <laughs> Not to <laughs> get to see comedians actually roasting the president, which used to be their job. They used to do that until Donald Trump came around, and it was all about Donald Trump. It's interesting in the in the last point about uh, what Richard said because the palace intrigue. We've been seeing him comment on when Donald Trump was in office over and over again, regardless if it was a name source or not. And you have, Richard. We've been doing this for over seven uh, years. Actually, so I know that. Tape, and I've been on, no, I on television with you. On this. Why, why, why you do that? The 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 the, the truth of the matter is Democrats are very much afraid of multiple issues that Joe Biden has, um, which is alienating voters. His age is one of them. The border is another one. Inflation is another one. And the economy is another one. Fox News polling just recently um, out. Republicans, 93 percent, have a negative view of the economy. Democrats, 61 percent. It's a problem. All right. Let, let's and, be and very Richard, clear, I though. just take issue with the fact that you think any of the reporting no, 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 I'm not denying the reporting. wouldn't be correct about but, Joe Biden. Uh, but Harris, and then his staff be, members would lie about the sort of thing that they, they rolled their eyes? To be fair and to be clear, if you pull any of the tapes, when Trump was in office and folks lamented oh, on how many times he went on vacation, I was one of the first people to say, I don't think this is a reportable story. This is not news here. The president should be allowed to take a vacation. Mm -hmm. I don't care who it is. Well, My point the president here said, is, Watch him. We've let's seen him talk falls, about the facts and let's talk about things. the indicators and let's not talk about people who are un unnamed sources. That's it. Well, it'll be interesting to see what happens next. If the president right. gets as tired and it really takes the first lady to slow down his, his, uh, his pace, that will become more public than you want it to be. But we'll cover it That's as right. it happens. Good to see you both. It's good to see you, Harris. You. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.